What does that say? Unknown melee pit? Hi. There's nothing here for Nora or Karja. Got it? Okay. Nice talking to you. Come on over here. It's like a you wanted to speak to me? Well, you arena know pit? Than anyone, it's a dangerous world out there. And not just against machines. That's a sweet outfit. Name's Odur. This here's my training pit. Best place to practice close combat this side of the Forbidden West. Say, I wonder who'd win in a fight. Me. You, the savior of Meridian, champion of the East, or the Enduring, master of the West. Who? The Enduring, a legendary Tanakh fighter, the master of masters. I've heard the Tanakh have training pits just like this one. It's how the warriors get so fierce, see? And only the very best from the pits get to train with the Enduring. So, to find the Enduring, I should look for these training pits if I'm ever out that way? You'll have to go far if you do. The Tanakh are split into three clans. Three clans, three capitals, three training pits. My guess is you'd have to beat all of them if you want to train with the Enduring. If the Tanakh don't kill you on sight, that is. Shouldn't be a problem. But that's a far spark in the wind. As for right now, I also offer challenges to test your fighting skill. Who would I be fighting exactly? You? Well, I know you're the savior and all, but you have to beat all the others first to challenge me. Rules are rules. I like it. We only use dual blades and practice arrows, mind. These drunken fools would run themselves through otherwise. You have to leave everything but your spear and practice arrows at the gate. But I'll look after your gear, not to worry. So, what do you say? Up for some training? <laughs> love it! I love arenas. That's what I like to hear. The melee pit. Test your close quarter fighting skills against other human opponents. Complete all challenges against other fighters to ultimately face the pit master. The pit also allows you to practice your melee skills in a focused tutorial or an open-ended training session. Uh, let's go challenge. Defeat other fighters in a time challenge to ultimately face the pit master. View melee pit info? Okay, that's what we just saw. I don't need to practice. The block breaker. You need to learn block breaker in the skill tree to unlock this challenge. Oh, I see. So it is still a tutorial, kind of. This is similar to the trials in the first game. Resonator Blast. Uh, defeat your opponent with a Resonator Blast. This technique utilizes your melee and range attacks and deals a massive amount of damage at once. Performing melee combos and power attacks energizes your spear faster. You will only use your spear and training bow for this challenge. Let's give it a go. Keep hitting your opponent with R1 or R2 attack combos. Put up here any faster. Use any R2 attack to energize. Okay. You think your spear can deal with that armor? Use attacks to energize your spear. Then hit your opponent with a heavy or power attack to blast the armor off. That energy doesn't last forever. That spear can give you the edge in battle. Wow. Keep energizing it and then your enemies. Triggering those energy blasts should help you vanquish your opponents. Cool. Uh, 30 seconds. Easy enough. I guess I'll have to unlock the block breaker and the... And, uh... Do that before we can do the pitmaster challenge. Okay. Oi! Oi! Unknown machine strike. Karja Magistrate. Unknown. Whoa. New quests. Let's go up here. Ho there. It's the new quest in here. Ah, we're in the pub. Mildef. Hey, Mildef. Mildef. I took some of your stew last time I went into the wild. It kept me going for a week. 
feel like I could have put a strider in a sleeper hole. Let me guess. Enjoy it while it lasts. They want ingredients for cooking. Sounds like you're serving up some uh, impressive provisions here. <sighs> Not again. You can have the discount too, but you'll have to come back later. I think you have me confused with someone else. Oven didn't send you? No. Oh, my apologies. It's just that his minions won't stop pestering me. <sighs> now I've even worn out my special grill. Since I'm in the midst of a crisis, perhaps you could skip to what it is you wanted? Some of your food? Of course. <laughs> Are all Bit of an awkward transition there. Oh, yeah. They constantly demand my best, but the equipment I need to make my signature dishes isn't built for batch cooking. And don't get me started on the Olven discount they feel so entitled to. And if you refuse? I make meals. No trouble. How did you end up in Chainscrape? Heard about a new and upcoming town at the edge of the frontier. Where there's a town, there's a tavern. I was in need of work. So I got myself out here and started cooking. Some of these people had never tasted proper boars and berries stew before. Anyway, next thing I knew, people kept coming back. Guess they like my food. Or the ale. Your last customer mentioned your cooking really kept him going out in the wild. Where I'm headed, I could- Look at the guy in the background. <laughs> I would be happy to oblige, especially since you have the decency to ask pleasantly. But? But my special groove griddle is no more. Without it, I can't cook any of my signature dishes. I hate to think what'll happen when I'm forced to refuse Olven or his goons. Even if I already had the right ingredients, there's nothing I can do. Unless you can source me a temporary replacement? What do you need? Walk forward. For the ingredients. <laughs> a few pieces of decent wild meat, and I'd say a big handful of bitter leaf stems. That'll do. As for the griddle, a corrugated metal panel might suffice until I can have a new one forged. You'd likely find one in a scrounger pile if you follow the river to the northeast. Don't worry, I'll clean it first. <laughs> You'll have no issue finding boars and bitter leaf on your way, assuming you're as much a hunter gatherer as your clothing suggests. Thanks, Smildiff. I'll keep an eye out. So that's what gratitude sounds like. Aww. Don't let anyone push you around, okay? If you say so. I always love watching the NPCs in the background because they do all kinds of weird stuff. Like this guy was just like walk it forward and then he'd walk back. <laughs> so ingredients, eh? This is a cool spot. I'm enjoying looking around these environments. Lighting's cool, too. It's time to feel the heat. Whoa! Can we, can we, uh, oh, I missed something. Can we be part of the stew? <laughs> uh, breastplate? Or, sorry, blast paste. <laughs> Metal bone, blast trap shards, medicinal berry, and wild meat. Yeah. Be enough wild meat for Mildiff. Oh, there we go. Apparently he already had <laughs> part of some of the ingredients that he wanted. Potion maker. And I can't talk to them either. Okay. Weird that there's people that have uh, icons above their head, but I can't interact with them, it seems. And some cleaning. Anyone else in here? Ah, savior. Over here. Ah -ha. Javad the Willing. Savior, thank you for taking the time. And my condolences that you had to endure Olvan's bloviating. I've dealt with worse. It sounds like he's really trying to put you over the barrel. The idea that the Karja purposely let Bristlebacks into the dawn, it's, it's completely absurd. But the louder and longer he says it, the more support he'll get for his damned concession decree. 
How did the Bristlebacks get into the Daunt? No one knows for sure. The first report of them came from west of the quarry. But unless they have wings I don't know about, I don't see how they could have come over the mountains. No other way in. The only way I know about is barren light. Look, if you can get to the bottom of this, I can offer a considerable bounty in return. Help me shut Olvent up. What is this concession decree that Olvent wants? That's what I wanted he to know also. He wants the Sundom to designate portions of the Daunt as Osaram Holdings. Only the portions, mind you, that produce any value. Let me guess. Because he stands to profit somehow? Exactly. With the Daunt under Osaram law, he could secure more investment for their numerous ventures. He can't get those investments without the concession? No. Not while there's a chance the Sundom could revoke their access. Hence, why the concession is so important to him. And why blaming the Karja for the Bristlebacks, no matter how absurd, works in his favor. How does blaming the Karja for the Bristlebacks help Olven get his concession? Look around. This may be the Sundom, but chain scrape is all gears and rust and bad ale. Claiming that the Karja loosed the bristlebacks in order to intimidate Osaram laborers into obedience. Well, let's just say no one here has forgotten the atrocities of the mad Sun King. And with the bristlebacks bringing work in the valley to a halt, Alvunt has plenty of time to pick at barely healed wounds. And if the Osaram refuse to work, unless the concession is signed, you won't have a choice. Correct. The reconstruction of Baron Light must continue. How did you get stuck out here? I asked for the posting, believe it or not. Overseeing the entire valley on behalf of the Sun King? It was an honor. Is an honor, I mean. But your job would be a lot easier without someone like Olvind blasting hot air all the time? Olvind's not going anywhere. He's been around longer than I have. Even fancies himself the founder of Chainscrape. <sighs> well, I'll find a way to live with him. I have to. Seems to me that the Osirum are doing the work here, and they're a, the large percentage of the population. They probably should be running the place. Just maybe not that guy. Uh, because he's clearly really greedy. You said the Bristlebacks were first spotted west of the quarry? Yes, according to one terrified laborer, said the ground trembled before they came charging down the hillside. He took off and ran all the way here. Good place to start looking, then. If you learn the truth, maybe Olvant will stop blaming the Karja for every problem under the sun, and maybe then he'll actually focus on rebuilding Baron Light instead. But yeah, they should they should help out with that. Interesting situation. I like uh, that there's a little bit of um, subtlety to the politics. It's not just black and white. Uh... Okay, anything else in here? That's the melee pit. Aaron's last known location. Machine strike. Herbalists we, we went to. Outfits we can't seem to interact with. Gather bitter leaf. See that? Is it, it looks like it's outside, just over here. It seems like bitter leaf likes to grow on rocky terrain. Hey, I think I have enough bitter leaf. It's watching the water here. It looks really cool. <laughs> there I am saying <laughs> it looks cool again. I gotta change. I gotta expand my vocabulary, everybody. I'm drunk. Be welcome, Elvin. It's a whole other side to the city that we haven't really explored. 
What's that supposed to be? Guess some kind of some kind of structure. Ah, some lore. Hammers for hire. It's hammering time. Oh no, whatever will the hammers do? Uh, hammers for hire do. Now that Gunnert has lost all their earnings to devious dicers. Another mercenary job? That's what. In this episode, our heroes delve deep into a mysterious tunnel at the edge of the claim, searching for the Elderman's missing daughter. Inside, they'll find a machine that will give them the fight of their lives. Can they survive the drilling jaws of this ravenous giant? Will they save the missing child maiden? Sorry. Find out in the latest issue of Hammers for Hire, Name Takers and Rock Breakers. Like a, like a comic book. Oh, you need the guys. Oh. Rolling around in their own filth. So the city's just, oh, there, the wall extends there. It's like, it's kind of open to this side. Don't often see new faces around here. That's why it pays to explore. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> I like the little barks. Give me great pleasure. This whole game's putting out like a big smile on my face. Grab the remnants of this burnt out house. It's what little they, the family that lived there had left. Ah. Uh, it's like three notches? I guess, does that represent how valuable it is? Ancient black bracelet. Cassia watch. And I think this is back to the tavern, right? Yeah, get, getting a mental map for this. Let's go to... Uh, let's take a look. Question mark is unknown. A dash of courage. Go to the scrounger site. Or should we go to the brink? Aaron's last known location. Let me take a look at the quests. Level seven. The bristlebacks. Aaron's a dash of courage. Let's do that. I'll probably do a lot of the side quests. And can we see travel? So it will cost us um, a fast travel pack to do that. If I go to the campfire, I said it again! Uh, yeah, if I go to the campfire, is it gonna cost us? Oops, wrong button. Fast travel free. So if I go from campfire to campfire, it's free. There is a setting that uh, makes it so that you can see those um, the tips. It slows down the load time so you can see the tips, but I turn that off because I, I want it to load fast. What do I need tips for? I haven't even died once and I never will. Let's 
scroungers. Might have said I could find a metal panel in one of the stuff. Got him. Be able to pull off that combo. No ammo. Definitely want to use frost. Makes such a big difference. Ow. Do I take damage if I go into the frost? Yeah. Where did that thing go? Hi, boar. Oh, there it is. Ooh, okay, that's plasma right there. Where'd it go? Oh. Ow! Holy crap! for a metal pen. This, uh... Enemies are no joke on this difficulty. I'm also used to being, like, endgame in the original game, so I'm really overestim overestimating my strength because I was super overleveled. And I had that awesome armor as well. I used up a lot of healing there. Power cell. Oh yeah, and if I want to craft potions. Oh, it takes medicinal berry. Okay. Gotta remember about the rocks as well. I like the uh, blue butterflies flying around the berries. I think I cleared the site <laughs> kind of by accident. I just wanted to kill some stuff along the way. I also cleared the site though. Find this in my stash later. It's one of the piles, I think, right? No metal pedal. I'll right, check another scrap pile. Ooh, lots of good stuff. Didn't get it. Ooh, cool. I definitely could have used this.
their uh, scrap pile here. I think I have everything I need for Mildiv. Good thing too. I can use a decent meal. Oh yeah, can I call? No, I guess I lost Carl. Keep scaring them off. This is one thing that I would do in the first game. I would kind of like, if I was traveling down a specific area, I would I would uh, mark off the stuff that I could hunt to kind of gradually build up my supply. Probably don't want to use that. Oh, I thought I'd be able to climb up there. Still figuring out exactly what we can climb up and what we can't without pulsing. Unknown. Kind of want to check that out. Oh, that's way up there. <laughs> Uh Let's go. One rock. Not following my own my own plan. Yeah! Love it! Love the free exploration! We got some stuff to collect on the way out. Not to let this stain my hands. Haha! <laughs> I kind of like that it shows you the handholds when you're climbing. I'm, I'm down for that. Oh, I want to collect that. Verdant blue. This place has seen better days. Is this just an overlook so you could see different spots? in the valley. Those aren't handholds, eh? Uh, okay. Ah. Oh, yeah. Oh, beautiful. So many great views to be had. Really like the expanded climbing. Because I love games like uh, Shadow of the Colossus. And actually, I recently played Pray for the Gods, which was a ton of fun. Which gives you even more freedom in climbing. Very, very similar to Shadow of the Colossus. Kind of climb anywhere. Some kind of Whoa. device. The metal reflects the sun. Send a signal? Uh, okay. I 
guess I can't do anything with it right now. I saw an option to rappel down. Out right here. It's like a like a satellite dish. Ah! We're fine. <laughs> We're fine. We're fine. It's all good. It's all good. Cool. Look, we can over uh, have an overview of the city. Go even higher. I guess we're going to come here later, probably to activate, reposition these maybe or something. It's another repel point. Ah, okay. Pass them. Guess I should leave it for now. Oh god, it scared the hell out of me doing this. I guess I did it enough times though. Like anything, you can get used to it. Okay, let's um, deliver the supplies. If I can figure out how to get down. <laughs> Looks like a good spot. I need that. I'll pick these up. So we can carry 12 berries now. Olven can't just ignore us like this, can he? Um, he almost died because of it. Have you I think he can ignore you. He seems to be doing a good job of it. 